God, to their sisters, Lord. My God, like the prodigal son, Lord. My God, let them know, Lord Jesus. My God, the place waiting on them, oh God. My God, let them move before it's too late. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us to stand on your word, Lord. My God, oh God, give us victory, Lord, over our situations and circumstances. My God, hallelujah, help us, Lord, so it won't get complicated, Lord, and we get discouraged, God. Oh, Jesus, we need you, Lord, every step oh, of the way, every hour of the day, every second of the hour. My God, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you for how you blessed us all the year long. My God, it could have been another way. But Lord, you have been merciful. You've been kind, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the glory, oh God. My God, in Jesus' name, help, Lord, those organ ministries, oh God, that you anointed and appointed, Lord. Selected and erected, Lord. My God, hallelujah. Oh God, put the anointed upon them, oh God, that they may minister to the word uh, in power and love and conviction, Lord God, uh, that somebody would change for the better. Uh, hallelujah, God. Look on Facebook Live tonight. Uh, my God, oh God, YouTube, Lord. Uh, those that are watching, oh God, uh, uh, let them know, Lord, uh, my God, the word of God is right, Lord. Uh, it's our safety net. Uh, it's our praise, God, pray. Uh, my God, hallelujah, it's our way out of here, Lord. Uh, help us, Lord, to endure. Uh, yeah, Lord, uh, have your way. Uh, oh, Lord, take us through, Lord, uh, my time of despair. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. Keep us, Lord, my God, anointed, Lord. Uh, keep us fresh and renewed uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, 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 Lord. Uh, God, we give you praise, Lord. My God, deliver us, Lord, from the slothfulness, Lord God. Uh, my God, let us be sound in mind, fervent in business, Lord God, with a mind to move forward. Uh, find all jealousy and envy, strife and ogre, bitterness and hate. Uh, my God, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, let us rejoice, Lord. Uh, my God, make a joyful noise uh, unto you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah, Lord, uh, who called us out of darkness, Lord, over into the marvelous light. Uh, my God, Jesus, we'll never forget uh, the thing you've done for us, oh God. Uh, Jesus, we thank you for your word uh, that reminds us, Lord. Uh, my God, a time is short. Lord, Lord, and the devil knows time, oh God, about to run out, Lord. Help us, Lord. My God, to be about your business, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to be proactive, Lord. Help us to be energetic, Lord. Help us, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Let the fire burn down in our souls. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus, we need you. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Stir us up, oh God. Let the Holy Ghost uh, move in us. Uh, my God, those that don't have the Holy Ghost, Lord, and they're surrounded by it, Lord. Every service, God. My God, you're moving by your power. Let them know, Lord. Uh, my God, you said, whosoever will, uh, let them come. Uh, hallelujah. Fill them, oh God, with the power of the Holy Ghost. The young and the old, God. Rich and the poor. Yeah. God. Hallelujah, Lord. Give us a refreshing, Lord. Hallelujah. Of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, God. So we can love our enemies, Lord. Pray for them in this Bible to use us, oh God. Oh, Jesus. Have mercy, oh God. We need you right now. Stir us up, Lord. Let us be excited, Lord. Put a smile on our face, God. Put clapping in our head. Run in our feet, Lord. Joy in our soul. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Lord. You did it all. You paid it all, God. Yeah, God. Woo, thank you, oh, God. My, 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 my. Oh, Jesus, have mercy, Lord. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on our soul. Oh, Jesus, don't let us dry up, Lord. Don't let us turn it down. My God, hallelujah, be on fire, Lord. No matter what nobody else does, Lord, let us start over in the by individual, start our own fire. Yeah, let us spread uh, like it did on Pentecost. My God, hallelujah, Lord. Do it for us, God. 
Yeah, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we need you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Let the anointed Lord rest in this place, God. Yeah, God. Oh, Lord, give us the mind, Lord. My God, and prepare ourselves to meet heaven, Lord. Prepare ourselves, Lord. My God, in the name of Jesus. We want to hear you say, well done. Good and faithful servant. My God, you was obedient. My God, you went out your way. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. Oh, God, hallelujah. Be witnesses, Lord, of these things, Lord. Tell what you've done for us, God. Yeah, Lord. You told the young man, Lord, go tell that great thing. Yeah, Lord. My God, we thank you right now. Yeah, Kanye Osiah. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. Come on in the building. My God, Osiah. Come on in order. Yeah, 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 Jesus. Woo, bless your holy name. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be right ready. Help us, Lord, Yosha. Help us, Lord. Oh, individually or the personal thing. Help us, Lord. It's not a coalition thing. My God, it's not a group thing. It's an individual effort. My God, to fall in love with you, Lord, so we can share one with the other. In the name of Jesus, find the wickedness, Lord. My God, the fall false doctrine, the false teaching. My God, oh, hallelujah, the harlots, Lord. My God, that fooling the people. My God, holding them in iniquity, holding them in bondage. Oh, we declare and we decree right now. Oh, God, break every spirit that's not like you, Lord. Every chain, you old shot. In the name of the living God, help us to be willing and obedient. My God, in the name of Jesus, obedient children, Lord, submissive, Lord Jesus, to your perfect will. Yeah, Hey God, hallelujah, help us not to slack up and slow up, get common with one another, but God, let the fear of God be in our heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Oh, bless this little group, Lord. Let us grow, Lord, in the spirit, Lord. Give us a mind to want to share. Hallelujah, on the condition, Lord. Oh, God, no matter what the circumstances may be, long as your love, my God, in the name of Jesus, go on before us, Lord, showing us the way. Yeah, Lord, help. By your side. Help, Lord, your side. We need you right now, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need, oh God. My God, hallelujah. We need an individual revival. My God, somebody get excited. Somebody want to share. Somebody, my God, want to, oh God, magnify you. Somebody want to worship. Somebody want to praise you. Somebody, oh God, want to obey you. Somebody want to go beyond these walls. Yay, Lord, hallelujah. And tell them, oh God, my my God, you're here, and you're here to deliver, save, and set free by the power of God. Oh, Jesus, do it for your glory and your people. Bless them one by one, Lord, name by name. Yeah, God. Oh, individual by individual. Y'all, you know what they need. He come over. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord, feel your presence right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just want to be saved. Oh, God, I just want to do what's right. No, God, I'm living to live again. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. Have mercy on my soul. Jesus, right now, touch my companion, touch the body. Yeah, God, right now, use it on tonight. My God, touch the soul to be recipient, Lord, of the word of God. My God, on the internet, Lord. My God, all across the world, let there be open, the heart be open to receive the word with thanksgiving. We all shout. And we'll forever give your name to praise. Somebody clap your hand and tell God, thank you. Come on, clap your hand real good for Jesus. Whoa, yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. Oh, God want to do something. How am I see all the God want to do something. Then want to do something. Hallelujah. We want people with a mind that want something from God. Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us, help us, Lord. Oh, God, help us, Lord. Please, Jesus, help us, Lord, not to get slow. Help us not to get in a routine. God, you told us, God, hallelujah. My God, reality, not formality. You told us, Lord, biblical, Lord, not traditional, God. Oh, Lord, you send words, God, with power. Oh, you said agree, oh, God. Is it power when they agreement with your word. Yay, God. We touch and we agree, Lord, on the word on tonight, God. Yay, 
day, Lord. Let it fall like fine rain, Lord. Hallelujah. When it fall on us, Lord, let me own up to it and say, Lord, you're right. Help me on that area. Help me, Lord, how we can be saved. Oh, God, look on the young people, Lord. Let them know, Lord, ain't no young Holy Ghost. Ain't no old Holy Ghost. It's just Holy Ghost. My God, in the name of Jesus, you know how to make the adjustment, Lord. You know how to make us understand. You know how to deal with the issues at hand. Yay, God. Do it, please, Lord. Please, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God, touch us the piercing, Lord. Give us strength on tomorrow. Be with us, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, right now. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. Yeah, God. Oh, yes, Lord. And we thank you for it. In the precious, mighty, holy name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. In the hands of Mother B. Glory to Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Truly, we thank God for being in his house one more time. He is a wonder-working Savior. We're thanking him for all his goodness towards us. We give honor to our fine bishop, amen, and to all the elders, ministers, evangelists, everyone in their proper places. Truly, I say peace be unto the saints. Amen. Truly, I thank and praise the Lord. Amen for enabling me to be here on tonight. Thank you for all your prayers. Amen. And all your provisions. Amen. So we're going to get right into the word. In, in Jesus' name, truly God is a wonder. All right. So tonight we're going to be talking about shaken faith and confidence lost. So how the Lord has been uh, talking to me, and I always take every message he gives and apply it to my own life first. You know, and to see, okay, Lord, where is my faith being shaken at? And what confidence have I lost? And so after identifying those areas, I asked God for help. Amen. And truly, I believe he is doing and will continue to do just that. Okay, so faith, definition, we all, we go to Hebrews 11 and 1, and we, you know, we quote that when we talk about faith. But I'm not going there tonight. We're just going to deal with uh, definition. So faith, the first definition of faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Complete, that means whole, totally. All the way. Nothing held back. Amen. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And we would know, hopefully know that God is the only one that is worthy of that type of faith. Amen. Because he's the only one that can live up to that, you know, um, requirement or, or that, you know, need or what have you. He can, he's the only one that can fit the bill. Put it that way. So the second definition says strong belief in God. Or in doctrines of the religion. Okay, strong belief in God or in doctrines or religion. So basically the second definition of faith is telling us that it's our belief. It's our religious system. It's what we, you know, practice. Right? And then the third definition for faith is a system of, of religious beliefs. So if my faith is shaken, that means then I have lost my uh, confidence or my trust Number one, in God. Number two, in my religion or in my religious uh, doctrines or beliefs or practices. Okay, so because bear that in mind as we go along. We won't be before you long. It's a little short message, but it, it will speak to you if you let it. So to be shaken means to having had one's composure or confidence upset having had one's composure or confidence upset, to be shocked or disturbed. So if my faith is shaken, it means I've lost composure. I'm no longer on a solid ground or a solid path. Um, I'm kind of disturbed or I'm upset or I'm questioning or doubting what I believe and who I believe in, right? 
And so some of the synonyms to uh, being shaken is distressed, amen, troubled, or unsettled. So when my faith is shaken, I become, un unsettled is another way of saying I'm not stable, okay? I I'm not content, okay? I'm not satisfied, right? So if my faith is shaken and it's shaken in my religion, my religious practice, my beliefs, and it's shaken in my God, it's disturbed, I'm upset or I'm, I'm you know, distressed or troubled about trusting and believing in God, then that is going to begin to affect my walk with God. That is going to begin to affect my interaction with God and with my brothers and sisters in Christ, right? So let's move on. So confidence, and this is a word God had given me a couple of months back, and I had just been kind of researching it, and like I said, applying it to myself first. And it says confidence is the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. That's another way of saying I believe in you. Okay, I'm trusting in you. Okay, so uh, it says firm trust. And number three, the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. Okay, so if I'm feeling confident about something, then I'm assured that some of the synonyms, uh, it, I have conviction, I know it's reliable, uh, I can depend on it, right? I have the assurance, I have a fact, it's a fact, it's sure, right? I have confidence in it. So if my faith is shaken, it's going to affect my confidence. And then I'm going to begin to lose confidence in uh, God, God's people, God's word, you know, my practices, what, how, you know, what I really believe, okay? Uh, and we see, if the Lord was uh, ministering to me first, um, we see this happening in the church, but we as church people have learned very well how to cover up our faith being shaken or our confidence beginning to wane, okay? We know how to put on a good face. We know how to, I hate to use the word show, but we do know how to put on a good show. We do know how to uh, uh, carry on as though nothing is going on. And, and some would say, well, Mother Reed, that's me d demonstrating my faith. Well, in actuality, if your faith is already shaken, who, what faith are you demonstrating? Faith in your own abilities? Faith in your own skills? Faith in your own beliefs? What, what are you really demonstrating your faith in? Okay, uh, so to be lost, we know means I'm no, I'm no longer in possession of, of the thing, right? So that means my confidence is gone. Okay, so if I don't have confidence in a thing, that means I can't really have faith in a thing. I can't really trust in a thing. I'm unassured about a thing, right? So if I'm unsure about my Savior, if I'm, I'm not sure and my confidence is lost and my faith is shaken, that means my whole uh, well-being is at stake, okay, and for a child of God. Because a true child of God, their whole life is built around Christ. Their whole life is built around their faith and their trust in God and their doctrines that they have been taught and their beliefs and the things that they practice. And so if that gets disrupted, if that gets disturbed, if that uh, begins to uh, lessen in our lives, if, if that becomes a conflicting part in our life, become, I become conflicted about that in my life, then I'm going to start looking for other pathways to take. I'm going to start looking for other solutions. I'm going to start seeking for uh, assurance and confidence of, to put somewhere to put my confidence and someone to put my confidence and assurance in, right? So it said, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. And so the devil desires to have every one of us. And if he can't get us one way, he'll try to get us another. And he is not a fair fighter. He doesn't care that... Uh, your confidence or your faith has been shaken maybe over a traumatic thing that's happened in your life. 
It could be that you've lost someone that you've loved or you've lost your job or you're dealing with uh, uh, sickness or dealing with financial issues. He doesn't care about any of that. All he wants to do is catch us at a vulnerable moment. Okay, so when our faith gets shaken and when our, our confidence is lost, he knows we're very vulnerable. And that, that's when he starts slipping in with uh, error, false doctrine, or another way, another plan. Uh, we won't call it another God, but we have something else to focus on. So when we begin to focus on something other than God, and we begin to put our trust and confidence in something other than God, then once again, we begin to uh, be detached from God. A separation comes between us and God. Right? And so as I was saying earlier, there are many things that can shake our faith. There's many things that can disturb us and trouble us. And in this last day, the enemy is fighting very studiously uh, to uh, uproot sound doctrine. He's fighting to uproot uh, truth, our, um, our trust in the Lord. He's trying to make it look as though God doesn't care about us. He's really not concerned. Um, he tries to make it appear as though God is not hearing our prayers and not answering our prayers. You know, we've, we've prayed for things for a while, and like I said, even though we won't state it or say it, uh, you, 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 might, you know, we might think about it, but our faith is starting to get low. But we've been trained well, and we know to carry on our duties and our tasks. We know that we're to praise the Lord. We know that we're to read our Bibles. We know that we're to fast. We, we know what to do. But I can do all those things and it have no effect because my faith has begun to dwindle. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I cannot really obtain anything from God without faith. And the enemy knows that. So he wants to shake our faith. He wants to disturb, disrupt he, he wants to cause us to lose confidence. You know, if, if, if he can do that, like I said, then we become uh, sitting ducks, so to speak. We're, we're open target, right? It says, but I have prayed for you. Well, he says, Satan is out, desired to sift you, that he desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And if you ever, it's not like our modern day sifting. When, when the word of God was, you know, Get written, it was, they didn't have all the machines and stuff they have today to, you know, process the wheat and all of that. But they had to really manually sift this wheat, right? They had to not, first they had to go and glean the field, bring it in, pound it out, then they had to take and physically move, you know, and sift out all the foreign bodies. It was a process, and it took a lot of labor, manual labor, a lot of strength and energy so the devil wants to do us just like that. He wants to take us down to fine powder. He wants to take us down to the substance that's easily blown away, that's easily moved. Okay? That is what he's trying to do with the tests and trials. And I was talking with someone, the enemy, uh, God will allow us to go through tests and trials, but the enemy wants to make everything we go through seem to be unbearable. He wants to overwhelm us with these situations when that is not God's intent at all, okay? God will not put any more on us than what we can bear. But what God allows, the devil will um, try to piggyback off of that and try to defeat us through the, through the situation, right? So he wants to, as I said, make us lightweight. He wants to make it so that our prayers are not as fervent. Our Bible study is not as diligent our hope and focus on God is not as, as uh, strong as it once was. He wants to make us easy to be moved, right? It's easier to move a plaster statue than it is a real bronze statue, right? So the devil knows if he can sift us, if he can um, begin to work on our faith, our confidence, you know, if he can begin to shake us in our faith, you know, well, it, he did it for applesauce, peanut butter, and jelly, and I've been praying all this time, and he still hasn't done it for me. That's going to affect your faith. The devil knows it's going to affect your faith. And just like I was sharing in the Sunday school, when Daniel prayed, God sent the answer 
right when he prayed. But then the enemy came and tried to prevent Daniel from getting the answer in the hopes that Daniel would lose faith and lose confidence in God and stop praying. Because he knew if Daniel would stop praying, then perhaps he could keep Israel in bondage and uh, get another leg up on his self-fulfilling prophecy. Be greater than God, stronger than God, mightier than God, right? So the enemy, he watches and he, he looks out. And when you, uh, I said, when you start getting your strength built up in the Lord, you know, just like when you just got over this thing and you just starting to feel a little you know, a little, little like the weight is lifted, then the enemy will swiftly run in with something heavier than what you just came from under to try to sift you as wheat, to crush you, to make you lose faith, to make you lose confidence in God. Amen. And although we say, you know, we love God, I love God, I love God, I love God. But when you get up under an excessive amount of pressure and you've been praying to God about the pressure for all these years, eventually your faith is going to begin to dwindle. And that's why we need to pray one for another. That's why we need to hold one another up in prayer because uh, the enemy, he, like I say, doesn't play fair. And if you know I just came out of a great trial and here I am going through another one, you might think, well, she's been saved all these years, she can handle it. But you don't know what the first trial did to me. You don't know how much strength the first thing I went through did to me. You're assuming that I, it had no effect because, once again, I know how to put on a good face. I know how to keep coming to church. I know how to keep singing songs of Zion. I know how to read my Bible. I know how to carry out my duties, right? So because I have this facade or this uh, appearance as though I'm still strong, uh, the outside may appear to be strong, but the inside, that spiritual man, could be very weak. And God and the devil knows it. And the devil will try to take advantage of that weakness, right? That's the importance of confessing one to another and praying for one for another that we might be healed. Not just physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, things of that nature. Because things we go through will, can and will, shake our faith. It will cause us to begin to lose confidence in God. And we can say all we want. I would never lose confidence in God. Words are easily spoken, but actions tell the story. Amen. Said, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith. See, so the Lord was uh, alerting Peter to the fact that if someone's not praying for you, it's a possibility you won't make it out of this. Amen. Because that's what trials and tests and tribulations and burdens do. They wear us down. And we need someone to be there interceding and holding us up so we can go through. We all want to make it to heaven, right? We all want to see Jesus in peace. We all want to be uh, a light for the Lord here on earth. We all want to be a great, you know, uh, representative for Christ here on earth. But the thing is, um, how many years have your faith been shaken? How long have you been walking with little to no confidence? Just, just going through the motions, right? So it says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And, and so faith is a very in, important um, element in our walk with the Lord, okay? And when thou art converted, now Peter, when you get through and you are converted, not you just come out of this, but you are healed, you are converted, you are made stronger after you come out of this. Strengthen our brethren. But if I never really come out of it, and I'm trying to strengthen my brethren, I, am, I don't have strength to help myself, and I really don't have strength to really help you either. So I may fall, and you may fall too. Oh, y'all didn't think about that, right? If a weak person is trying to help a weak person, and I'm not talking about sin and things like that, I'm just talking about you are spiritually exhausted. 
You have been sifted. You are, you are spiritually weak. You, yes, your yes. faith is, is dwindling and your confidence has gotten, you, yes. That doesn't mean you've backslidden. That doesn't mean you don't love God. It just means you need strength. You need to be uh, revived. You need to be restored. Amen? And that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be here for. We're supposed to be strength to one another. You know, we're, we're supposed to, uh, every joint is supposed to supply its part. part. So when, when one hand sees the other hand is weak, you got arthritis in this one, and this one doubles in strength to try to make up for the, you make up the difference and assist the other. So what am I saying? Well, look around us. I guarantee you quite a few people are going through this very thing right now. Shaken faith and lost confidence. And it, it hurts to say or even to think that we would lose confidence in our God, right? But you remember the story of John the Baptist, right? He was a forerunner for Christ, right? And he went and he ministered, did all this ministry and, and like paving the way for Christ. And then after Christ came on the scene and began to minister, John recognized that I must decrease, but he must increase. But John, I'm sure, never imagined in all his days that he would end up in prison. After doing all that good, after obeying God to the fullest, he still ended up in prison. So his faith was shaken a little bit. Because he, when the disciples, others would come, you know, like visitation, I would say. But he said... It, is he the one asking? Is he the one or, or should I look for another? Am, am I waiting for someone else to come? Because his faith had been shaken. You know, and he, he had began to lose confidence. Did I do the right thing? Did I speak of the right person? Did I point them to the right one? Or, because his faith had been shaken and his confidence was waning. He's just about to lose his confidence. So the Lord sent the disciples back to him and told him, go tell him, blinded eyes are being opened. You know, go, go testify to him of the things that I am doing. What was he doing? I, I want to build his faith back up. I want to restore his confidence. I want him to know he did the right thing. So if, if uh, Apostle John or John the Baptist could go through that, who are we? that think that we won't lose faith. Our faith can't be shaken or our confidence can't be lost. It can and it has been and it will continue to be. And that is why it's so important that we be unified and that we love one another so we will pray fervently for one another. I'm supposed to pray for you just as, like, just as though I was praying for myself. I should pray for you just as hard as I would intercede for my own self. Because we need one another. We are the body of Christ. Amen. Right? Amen. So he's telling people, now you need converting. You, you need to be restored, renewed, revived. Then you can go out and help your brethren. That's, and that's why the last week or so I've been crying out, Lord, sin. Sin revival. Sin revival. I'm not talking about a revival that just makes us feel good. I'm talking about a revival that will replenish that which was lost. I'm talking about a revival that go, will go down in the depths of our soul and anchor itself there. Amen. And give us our strength back. Give us our joy back. Give us our, our endurance, our peace back. Give us our blessed hope back. I'm talking about a real revival because our faith has been shaken. And our confidence is being lost. Right. Amen. Sometimes I look at people when you say pray and, they, you know, they get this like blank expression will come on their face. Like, yeah, okay, I'm going to pray about it. So I know in my heart I'll be saying they're not going to pray about that. They're not going to pray. They're going to go on and, and, you know, keep going down their little path doing what they're doing. They're not going to pray. Why? Because their faith has been shaken. They've lost confidence in the power of prayer. And what, how powerful it is to believe God when you pray. And if I don't really believe God when I pray, then 
Yes, why pray? Because nothing's going to happen because without faith, I'm not going to get anything, right? So I need to admit or acknowledge where I'm really at. My faith has been shaken. There have been things going on that just have shaken my faith and and just have my confidence and just, you know, Lord, I I need you to come and I need you to uh, revive me once again, restore me. Amen? All right, we're going to talk about the war between the Philistines and Israel. Y'all remember that war in the book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter? I didn't put the scriptures in there, but because I'm pretty sure we all, well, I guess I shouldn't assume, right? Uh, But hopefully we're all familiar with the story. Um, After David had been anointed to be the king and what have you, the war broke out and Philistines were fighting Israel and Philistines were going to war, right? And uh, so they they took their, their station, so to speak, one was on one mountain, and it was a valley between them. One was on the other mountain. And so they were on the mountain looking across at each other. But they would go down to the valley to fight. So now you have to grasp that. When it was up on the hill, everybody looked tall and big and strong. But when you get down to the valley, right in the heat of the battle, you begin to see, you know, where the real strength lies, right? So it, the Philistine, they went down and they, they, they would go to, go to battle and they were fighting and what have you. But the Philistines had a champion, right? So rather on the mountaintop or down in the valley, uh, Goliath was a giant. And you have to look at it in the, uh, I'm going to pick it up in the second verse. It says, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Okay. And the Philistines stood on on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span. He was nine feet, 4.6, and I looked it up. Amen. So he towered above everybody. Right? And as you read on through there, it tells you all with all the armor he had and how much each piece weighed. And so he was a force to be reckoned with. And uh, uh, King Saul told David, this, he was trained to war from the time he was a child on up. So at, after viewing this, God said, that's just just how tests and trials are. They loom over us. They they tower over us, you know, and like challenge us. I dare you to try to get up. I dare you to try to come out of that. I I dare you to talk about you're going to get victory over this. You better not tell anybody about this thing because if you tell anybody, anyone about this situation, they're going to think you're weak. And you know what? I came to the conclusion you can think what you want. I, when I need help, I tell you the dirty, dirty, low down, whatever else needs to be told, I'm going to tell it so I can get the help I stand in need of. Right? So that stronghold can be broken. Y'all think about it. So this began to shake the faith and confidence of Israel. I was thinking on, I said, but Israel had won many battles before. They knew God was on their side. They knew they were God's chosen people. They had, yes, they had won battles against Phil, the Philistines in the past, but they didn't have Goliath. Are y'all following? So the enemy knows, he, he kind of, he, he strategizes and he says, okay, uh, when we're on, you know, level planes, they get the upper hand. But I, I got to get something stronger than that. Right? So when, we, when our faith is shaken and our confidence begin to, to dwindle, we begin to lose confidence. I'm picking it up at the 11th verse. It said, when Saul and all Israel heard those words, because Goliath would come out every day and challenge them. Give me a man. I just want one. Just give me a man to fight with me, and if he wins, then we'll be your your slaves. 
right? But if, if he wins, then, you know, if I win, then y'all got to be isolated. We'll cut out all this uh, scrapping down here in the valley. That's just my paraphrasing, right? And so when they heard uh, Goliath speak these words, look what happened to him. Saul and all Israel, see, it wasn't just the soldiers, the king too. Don't ever think leadership doesn't go through stress and distress and, and uh, you know, fears come upon them too. They struggle and go through battles and tests and trials too. Their faith sometimes gets shaken as well. Their confidence can be, begin to be lost as well. They can begin to ask God, God, did you really call me to be the pastor, or you called me to be a minister, or did you really, is this really you, or did I take this on myself, or, because if I took it on myself, I can walk away very quick, I can just lay it down and move on. But when God has put something down in you, it doesn't matter, and I'm going to show you, it's in the scripture in a, in a minute, doesn't matter how we try to get away from it, it always stays right there. It's constantly talking in your ear. You know, constantly reminding you, you were chosen. You were called out. You, you were ordained for this. This is what, you know. Anyway, so the king, the, the soldiers and the king said they were dismayed and greatly. Not only were they shocked and, and overwhelmed, they were really scared. There are trials and tests and situations that can come in our lives that really stirs up fear in our hearts. Even though with all this knowledge of how great our God is, how powerful and how awesome he is and how much he loves us, even with all of that, even after experiencing his move in our lives and, you know, he's healed us before, delivered us, but even with all that, we still get afraid. Amen. Amen. And it messes with our faith. And oh, if I don't do something quick, I got to hurry up and do something. If I don't do something real quick, uh, then I'm probably going to be defeated. I'm going to be overwhelmed. I'm going to be, you know, destroyed by this thing. And the whole thing is, have faith in God. And see, that was David's attitude. He was trusting God. He was not depending on his own strength, but he had his full confidence in God. Okay, so, and picking it up in the 23rd verse, because, you know, they, his brothers tried to talk him out of it. You know, tell him, you know, you naughty, your naughty self, you just down here just trying to be nosy. You know, they just talked about him bad. Uh, and I say because they was kind of jealous because David got anointed king. And, and was chosen by God above them and their great stature and all of that. He was a little lowly, you know, uh, sheep, uh, shepherd boy. And, you know, I'm sure that didn't sit well with them. And here he is now talking about, okay, what the king going to give me if I kill him? Paraphrasing, of course. Uh, so they, the other soldiers, not his brothers, mind you, but the other soldiers were telling him what the king had said and what the king had promised and what is, you know, not so much that David wanted the reward. He just wanted to know if the king was aware, if he was willing, what was the king willing to do to get rid of this giant? And so we have to ask ourselves, what are we willing to do to get rid of the giant that's shaking our faith and causing us to lose our confidence? No matter what it is doesn't matter. You can put whatever name you want to on it. It's still a giant. And it's still messing with our faith and confidence in God. All right? So as he talked with him, behold, there came up that here come Goliath. So first David got secondhand information. Now he's getting to uh, experience it for himself. Feel the full effect of the threats of this giant. Right? You know how sometimes we go through situations like kind of unattached it's not our situation but we suffer because we you know acquainted with associated with a, a part of or what have you uh so we don't feel the full brunt of the situation 
but we still suffer because of it, right? It still affects our faith, uh, uh, what have you, shakes your faith a little bit, uh, might work on your confidence a little bit, right? So like when Bishop was dying in the hospital, well, they, they said he, you know, he was going to die, but, you know, that kind of mess with our faith, maybe, maybe not y'all's faith, but, you know, it makes you wonder, God, why? What, where, where, why, what, what's going on, you know, kind of thing. Amen. So the enemy knows. He, he knows what we love. He knows where our, how much strength we have. He knows our pattern. See, the devil knows us almost as well as God does. You say, Mother Reed, that's a bold statement to make. Yes, but the devil watches us. You have to remember. When he sets out to destroy something, he studies it first. Right? When Christ came, he, he knew where Christ came from. And he even knew that that was God in the flesh. He knew the plan, but he strategized. He said, what I will do is I'll use his own creation against him. And the devil is still using that strategy today. So, and it's, so they talked to him, and, and the Goliath came and said... Out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And now David got to hear it for himself. You know, it don't hurt so bad when you hear it secondhand. But when they you come right in your face and tell you, yeah, I said it, yeah, I did it, yeah, I meant it, what, you know, what you going to do about it? That, that has a little a greater effect on you and just than just somebody telling you, you know so-and-so said so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Because now you face-to-face -face with the situation. Right? And now where in the past, if, you know, if, if you were just talking to the person that's sharing the information, you could say all kind of things. Well, I'm going to tell them, and I'm, a, you know. But when you face-to-face -face with that giant, when you face-to-face -face with that situation, you know how we say, I'm going to tell the doctor, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to. But when we actually get face-to-face -face with that one-on-one, -on -one with that situation, that's going to tell where our faith is really at, how strong our faith really is, who our confidence is in, and how strong our confidence is, right? But David didn't, you know, it didn't make David afraid. It's in all the men of Israel. See the effect this having on them, making them scared and afraid. So when our faith gets shaken, that's one of the signs you can look for. When your faith has been shaken and our confidence is being lost, we're going to be afraid of a lot of things. Amen. 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 I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my health. I'm going to lose my car. I'm gonna, oh, they're going to say that. Oh, they're this and all oh, that, you know. Because our faith has been shaken and our confidence is being lost. They saw the man, look what they did. They fled from him and were sore afraid. Situations that God has already told us we had a victory over. When he told us, you know, and look when he told them, his disciples that he gave them power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. You know what I've discovered? We're afraid to use it because... Because our faith has already been shaken. The devil done roared so much and backed us up in the corner for so long till we're afraid to take the weapons God has given us and use them to defeat the enemy. Because our confidence is not there. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I say the blood of G, will he move, will he stop? Uh, like the Bible says, you can speak onto this mountain and tell it to be removed into the sea and it, Our confidence has been lost and our faith has been shaken. So to make bold statements like that, I don't want to be looking foolish. I don't want to be made ashamed if I say it and it don't happen. See, because our faith has already been shaken. And our confidence is already being lost. Are y'all following? <clears throat> Well, we, you know, when Jesus prayed for people, he didn't say, uh, if you will and if you want to or if you feel like and uh, by and by, none, none of that. 
he just specifically called the thing out by what it was, told it what it had to do, and it obeyed. Why? He knew who he was. He had full confidence in what he had come to do. And he operated in the same authority he knew he was going to leave here for us to operate in. I mean, really, that's, that's the amen truth. <laughs> but see how we, we look at that. Now, the way, the, what we do with that is we say, that's not for this dispensation. That's how we justify our, our lack of faith, our shaken faith, and our loss of confidence is by, oh, that's not for us today. That was for them back there. Okay, because now, you know, we got the Holy Ghost and God already know we stand in need of and all we have to do is talk to God. You know, we don't have to command nothing to come out and we don't have to, you know, command nothing to be moved or nothing. We, we just meditate in our heart. But when Jesus ministered, he spoke out verbally because he understood the power he had. He had full faith and confidence in what he came to do. Has he hasn't changed, right? Same yesterday, today, forevermore. He changes not. So does the Holy Ghost change when it comes to living us? Is it a different spirit? Is it different from God? It's the same spirit, right? So our faith has been shaken and our confidence has been lost. And it's because of so many false prophets and as they say, charlatans practicing all the fake stuff going on. And so now, in our mind, it, I, you know, will it happen if I, if, if I try to exercise that? Will, will God honor it? Uh, you know, uh, can I prove that what they're doing is wrong? Will God's power be strong enough to do it? Will, you know, the, we don't say those words, but our actions are like that. He had so much confidence in what he'd come to do in the flesh and what, you know, the power and authority he had. He waited, deliberately waited, for Lazarus to be in that grave four days. Just to show his great power. Just to show I am God with you. Right? And that's the same kind of power, the same kind of faith and confidence we're supposed to have right now today. Right? All right, First Peter 5, 8, 9 said, be sober. See, because when we're not sober, we're not watchful. And when we're not watchful, we let things slip. And when we let things slip, we get under attack. And when we get under attack, we start, our faith starts to be shaken. But I'm a child of God, but I'm saved, but I'm, I'm holy, I'm righteous. Oh, God shouldn't let this happen to me. He never said we were not going to go and do things. But what he promised was that he would give us victory through the midst. Or he would, bring, you know, stop it, bring us through it and out of it. Or we could take authority and defeat it. That's what he said. I tell you, there's a lot of things that we could avoid if we get our faith back up and placed back in Christ and get our confidence back in Christ, right? Not the vessel, the God, all right? Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, <clears throat> as a roaring lion, what does he do? See, he's on a mission. The devil is on a mission to destroy everything that names the name of Christ. And the best way he can do it is causing us to lose faith in God. Because he understands the principle per perfectly. He understands what happens when we don't have faith. He understands we can get nothing from God without faith. This whole walk with God is a thing of faith. We, have, we can't see him, we can't touch him, we can't handle him. We have to believe. So the devil goes about to put substitutes that he knows is going to crumble. 
He goes about to implant false doctrines that he knows was not going to hold up. All to rob us of our faith, shake our faith, and make us lose confidence in God. I did it like the Bible said. I did it right. And bad stuff still happened. I did it, just, you know. Why didn't God protect me? Why didn't God fight for me? Why didn't God, you know. Some things we have to take and do by faith. We have to take God's word and use it like God said, by faith. Some things, works and battles, we have to win through having faith and confidence in God. David wasn't strong. He wasn't mighty or anything like that. He even told the king, he said, well, I know what you're saying. You're saying I'm too young and I'm too little and I, I can't win the battle against him. He said, but when when the lion came to take the sheep, I killed the lion. And when the bear came, I killed the bear. And I don't, this Philistine ain't no different from any of that. Are y'all following? Okay, let me get on through here. It said, whom resist? See, I told you there's some things we have to do. But I cannot resist if I don't have strength. And my strength has to be in God. Right? I have to draw my strength, my, my power, my, my stay, my, you know, my joy, whatever it is. I have to draw it from God. Right? Knowing that the same affliction, see, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. This has been going on from the beginning. Right? The same afflictions are accomplishing your brethren that are in the world. In other words, they made it and you can make it too if you get your faith up. Keep your faith strong in the Lord. Keep your confidence solid in the Lord. Right? So, Elijah and Jezebel. And we know about Ahab, right? So God sent Elijah to turn the hearts of the children of Israel back to him, right? And we know that they went through this whole little display of ritual, uh, 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 a challenge kind of thing. If your God be God, let the God that answered by fire, let him be God, right? And so they went through the whole thing. We know the story. They offered the sacrifices. Uh, Jezebel's prophets never did produce a God that could answer by fire. But Elijah, when he prayed, he, he had him set the altar back up. He laid the sacrifice out and had him drench it. And he didn't say, a, you know, a whole lot of words because Elijah's faith was in God. His confidence was in God. Why? Because he knew God had sent him. He had full confidence and assurance that God had sent him on that mission. Right? So we know the story prayerfully that uh, God did answer by fire. He took the sacrifice and he took the wood and fire and everything. He just took everything to de show the people he was the true and living God. Right? So after all that transpired, um, Elijah had all her false prophets killed, which is what God intended to happen, right? So Elijah had all this confidence and all this faith while he was going through and for, you know, doing what God had told him to do, right? No fear whatsoever, right? But once all of it was over, He was vulnerable. He was weak. He felt alone. Right? So here go Ahab, the weak king, went and told his wicked wife, Jezebel, all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And here go old wicked Jezebel, sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods, little g, 
do to me and more also, but Elijah was serving the big G. Amen. If I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. But wait a minute. Elijah just witnessed a great demonstration of God's power. Right? I mean, he was outnumbered. <laughs> Vastly outnumbered. But he had no fear. But after it was all over, you know, that's how it goes. Sometimes we go through these great things. God, you know, anoints us and uses us to, you know, do great things in his name. And after the work is done, and we begin to settle a little bit, here comes the devil. And he will say all kind of things to you. You know that was, wasn't God. You know that was in your flesh. You know they didn't receive you. You know that ain't going to last. You saw all kind of stuff to wear on you to try to rob you or shake your faith and confidence. And when he saw that, you know, he, he heard those words and he realized he knew who Jezebel was. He, he knew her character. He knew that... Uh, she always tried to carry out her threats. He arose, and what did he do? So that means he was scared. Now his faith is shaken because the big bag booger bed and roared. You could be in perfect alignment with God. You could be fulfilling God's word according to what he has said and leaving out no jot, no till, nothing, doing it just like he said, right? And the devil will get disturbed. And if we're not careful, he'll shake our faith, right? And he'll have us running for our lives. I got to get up out of here. I got, I got to get as far away from here as I possibly can. You know, we say, well, you, if you know with God, why, you, why, you can't, why don't you have that same faith you had then? Why don't you have that same faith in the face of this threat? flesh. When we get weary and tired, that's why it's important to get your rest. When you're, when you're sick or when you're going through or what have you, the enemy will take advantage of that. And he'll make a, have us making uh, rash decisions. You know, and before we know it, we've gotten out of God's will. Right? God never told Elijah to go anywhere, to run or anything. Elijah did that himself because his faith had been shaken. He went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and he left his servant there. I don't want no baggage. I don't want nothing. Hey, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going. I'm getting when our faith is shaken and our confidence is low, that's, that's the next thing the devil want to do is run you away from your help. Run you away from your support. Get you away from people that love you. Get you away from people that pray for you. You always want to run. Got to get away. Got to get away. Get, this ain't the place for me. Nope, nope, nope. Can't stay here. Nope. Because our faith has been shaken. And he said, he came thither unto a cave and, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, <laughs> what you doing up in this cave? I didn't tell you to go in no cave and hide out. 
God has never told us to hide from the devil. He said resist him, rebuke him, you know, command him. He never told us to hide from no devil. But when our faith gets shaken and our confidence gets, confidence gets slow, that's the first thing we do. Well, not the first, but the second thing we do is we go run. Now, we might not leave the state or the city, but we're going to go hide in our house. You won't be seeing me no more. You know that's a trick of the enemy? When the Bible plainly tells us come together for the more. So I don't want to come amongst the people that hurt you. No, it wasn't the people that hurt you. It was the enemy that took something a person may have done that hurt you. We have to begin to recognize some of the tactics of the devil. Everything is not the people. A lot of it, a lot of it is the devil using the people or the devil using the situation, right? No, it's the people, I'm getting well, I don't want to be bothered with nobody. That's, this was Elijah's attitude. I don't want to be bothered with nobody. I'm going up in this cave, I'm going to hide away, I'm just going to stay there till I die. That's what happens when our faith gets shaken and our confidence is lost. We just want to hide away. Yep. Hey, what, what, what did you say? Jeremiah, Jeremiah? I say, I'm, I'm not coming out. I'm going down here in my room. I'm going to shut my door. And I ain't going to prophesy another nothing. I ain't going to do another nothing. I'm staying down here all to myself. But see, like I said earlier, when he is down in there, when it is God that has ordained you, God that has sent you, God that has um, commissioned you, you, you're not going to get away. <laughs> he said it was like, by God troubled him so, he had to come up out of that room. God wanted to remind him that when I am with you, nothing can harm you. That's what he had to teach the disciples when the ship was getting ready to sink. See, that they faith, y'all get what I'm saying? The faith has been shaken. The ship was filling with water, and Jesus was down there asleep. He had full confidence. He knew the ship wasn't going to sink. He, he, he wasn't worried a bit. And they accused the Lord of being uncompassionate. Don't you care that we about to drown out here and you up in here asleep? He wasn't worried about it. He knew who he was. That's the same confidence God wants us to have. Don't worry, the ship can't sink as long as Jesus is on board. When we have Jesus, everything is going to work out. It may be reeling and rocking and shaking and might get hot and all of that, but... It's just all a show. Just like with Job. It was just all a show. God never intended to destroy Job. He, he never intended for Job to, you know, to, to ever be without. He was just showing, you know, how great a God he was and using Job as an example about dedication and faithfulness and things of that nature. He, said, he told the devil, you can... Take everything he got. Take his children. Take his wife. Take his uh, property. Take his everything. But you can't kill him. Soul belong to me. You can't. You can't take his life. Right? And 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 didn't Job's faith? Job's faith got shaken. He got a little shaky there for a minute because he was he was going through so much. But in the end, God rewarded Job double fold for his, his faithfulness, his remaining and maintaining his integrity 
through the whole thing. Even though he thought some things now, and he even spoke some things, but in his heart he still held on to God. Right? And then he says, now we beseech you, brethren, in 2 Thessalonians, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together on him, unto him, that you do what? Don't be soon or be troubled, nor by word, as so don't let your faith be shaken. Don't lose your confidence. How can I, how can I accomplish that? Stay in the word. Keep your focus on the Lord. Stay prayed up. Cast the devil down and out. Don't listen to everything you hear. Don't listen to the roaring lion. Don't listen to all the gossip. Don't listen to the fear tactics. Right? And then your faith can stay strong. Gird up the Lord in your mind. Bring every thought onto the obedience and subjection of Christ. Why? Because what you think is going to get in your heart. And that's how you're going to act. Right? So if I think the devil's going to defeat me, I don't call him the devil, though. If I think the IRS is going to audit me, if I, if I, I think the doctors don't tell me I got cancer, if I think... then it's going to have that effect on me. And it's going to shake my confidence, my faith, and cause my confidence to be lost. And guess what? I just might get out there. I just might end up with cancer. I just, these things just might come on me. What Job said, the things I feared most, they came upon me. In wrap-up. <clears throat> that the trial of your faith being much more precious than a gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So in other words, he's saying, if your faith comes through the fire, God is well pleased. If you can come through the test, through the storm, through the oppression, or whatever it may be, with your faith intact, God is well pleased. It's considered as good as gold, pure gold, right? They used to, I didn't sing it, but they tell me they used to sing a song, Have You Been Tried in the Fire? They said, tell me now that you come forth as pure gold. Has your faith been shaken lately? Just think back. Has your faith been shaken? What about your confidence? Were you more quick to act on a problem on your own? before you took it to the Lord in prayer, before you sought help with it, before you sought the prayers of the saints to help you get through it? You know, are you more likely to discuss the situation amongst those that don't even know God or love God like we say we do than you are with the saints? Will you look to the word of God for an answer and a solution? Has your faith been shaken? Has your confidence gotten low or have you lost your confidence in God just because I come to church doesn't mean I still have confidence in God doesn't mean my faith is, is where it should be right I, I know how to come to church <laughs> you know I, amen so but when my faith gets where it's supposed to be and my confidence is restored then I will begin to perform the feats that God has promised and said that I could do. I can speak to the mountain. I can tell the devil where to go. Amen. I can rise above my enemies. I can show godly love and even in the midst of hate. I can still show his love. I can still be a bright light in the midst of all this darkness when my faith is up and my confidence is restored. Pray my strength for him. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand praise. Amen. Amen. We need that confidence. Amen. To stay afloat. Amen. Go with our faith. Amen. So we can make it through here because things are changing. Amen. Situations are changing. Amen. We're in the end time and the devil knows time is short. And that same faith you had when you first got saved needs to be increased. 
in that faith, Lord. I can't be that same faith, amen, 10, 15, 20 years ago, amen, uh, when you got saved, because a lot of things have came on the horizon since then, and you've been through the storm, and we have to be, amen, like the disciples said, Lord, we need you to do it again, because, you know, we've tired, and we've been threatened, and, and things of that nature, so we have to be that way, too, amen. First, you got to be honest with yourself, and that I am, amen, uh, more vulnerable than I was when I first started. Well, the Bible said we're supposed to be stronger. Yeah, we're going to be, said we're going to be stronger, but we go through some things as we follow the process. Then when we were weak, then we are made strong. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, weakness is, is, is vulnerable. Weakness is something. Amen. It's infirmity. Amen. Even in your body and your spirit, too. But to be strong, amen, you have to follow the process. Amen. I'm putting on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because he's coming. He knows time is short, and that's our adversary. It's not your neighbor. It's not your sister and your brother. Amen. Amen. It's the enemy that's working in them to try to defeat us. And it's so sad that so many has been defeated. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, you know, it's too late to try to get saved now because they're gone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some, some, uh, folded in the process, amen, so I'm going to need to come through, but you know my motto, it don't have to be you, amen, we can uh, prevail, as the Lord said on Sunday, amen, praise the Lord, uh, uh, our circumstances and situations, amen, let the love of God prevail in those times so we can come out, amen, praise the Lord, as pure gold. All right, Mother, you want to uh, discuss what we talked about for us the love night amen on next friday you know we're off this friday night amen praise the lord and we know we don't celebrate christmas right all right so it's they that just happened this with y'all night that this weekend that we are off and just they, they call christmas eve amen praise the lord but amen uh we ain't trying to tell you what to do we tell you what we teach what we believe and sometimes we have to reiterate amen praise the lord because that spirit comes down every year and it's strong but I don't know. It seems like to me it's sort of kind of weakened down, even in, among the folks in the world. But I think because of, as Mother was saying today, tonight, is the confidence. It's what Satan knows his job is uh, busy. I'm thinking more so as the economy, if anything, the, the coronavirus and all the other different stuff. Amen. People being cautious and things of that nature. But they still do celebrate it, though, all over the world. Amen. So we just want you to know, amen, uh, we want it. Uh, Anything we can do to defeat the devil, we're trying to flip. You know, I'm into the flipping business. If the devil got something, I'll flip it for Jesus. Amen. And give God all the credit. Take back what the devil had taken. Amen. Away. So God can get the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. If he fabricates something, amen, that can, he can use it, we're going to get it. Amen. Because, you know, I was thinking on the scripture when uh, they came out. Amen. They, they, uh, a lot of the people took a lot of the people's the enemy stuff and trying to, you know, trying to, Come out, amen, praise the Lord. So uh, we got to make sure we get the right thing. Well, don't be like, amen, that one young man, praise the Lord, that hid the stuff in the tent, amen, the Babylonian garment, and flew around there and, and got the whole camp in trouble, amen. Had the family got killed and everything else. So we got to be careful, amen, what we do, even though we have freedom, amen, because we have confidence in the Lord that he's going to bring us out. All right, she's going to let you know. And how we're going to construct this. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I put it all in her hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you got any concerns or questions, if you get any 